Dark fluffy bun. Loda. Chicken. Sandwich for Popeyes. Get the sandwich for just $3.99. Up until January of this year, every time I thought of TCL, all I thought about was TVs because I know they got some cheap TVs that are amazing quality. But then I attended their keynote at CES 2020 where they unveiled some phones and this one right here is one of them, the TCL 10 Pro, and it looks like a monster. As I was doing some research on this phone, I was thinking, is this the new OnePlus where you can get an affordable beast of a phone? A flagship killer, if you may? Well, I guess we're gonna find out and I'm pretty excited to see. We are looking at a 6.47 inch Full HD Plus curved AMOLED display that also supports NXT Vision as well as HDR10. So that right there makes it already sound amazing. I mean, you can watch Netflix shows with extreme contrast and color clarity. And they even went as far as curving the screen. I mean, personally, I'm not a huge fan of curved displays, so we'll see how much I like this one. But that's generally a flagship feature, isn't it? We're also looking at a 64 megapixel main camera. But the funny thing is, that's only 25% of the story because there's not only one, but there's two. There's not only two, but there's three. There's not only three, but there's actually four main cameras. Of course, the first one's a 64 megapixel shooter, followed by a 2 megapixel camera specifically for low light situations. Although 2 megapixels doesn't sound that great, but I guess we'll see. Coming up next, the third camera, a 5 megapixel macro lens so you can get up close and personal with your subject. You can get really close on some flowers or maybe a bee and get that really crisp detail. We have a 16 megapixel super wide angle camera at 123 degrees that gets you 3.3 times the shot you would normally get with a regular camera. On the inside, we are looking at 128 gigabytes of storage along with 6 gigabytes of RAM, and it also does have support for up to a 256 gigabyte micro SD card. Although theoretically, it could support up to 2 terabytes, but it's not lynching, but I mean, it might work, so why not? Along with a 4500 milliamp hour battery that does support quick charge 3.0 at 18 watts of power and also reverse charging from the USB-C port to another device, which is pretty amazing. Now one of the big things that it is missing, which I always love as a feature is wireless charging. It's non-existent here. Uh, why? And all these goodies are powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon 675 octa-core processor. Now it's not the highest end processor in the world, but for 450 bucks with all these other features, as long as it's not lagging, and the user experience is good, does it really matter? Personally, I haven't really been paying attention to processors over the last few years because basically every phone you get is gonna be smooth unless you get one that's like a hundred bucks. But really, at the end of the day, it's the user experience that matters, not the spec sheet, because you can have some amazing specs and a crap phone. So now I'm really excited to see what TCL has done aside from the TV market. I mean, they did well with the packaging. It's looking very fancy. Display greatness. Now, personally, I'm not really too fond of the way they did that. I mean, I see what they were going for, but this big gap just kind of doesn't do it for me. Although, I understand what they're trying to do. So, I guess it's all right. That's kind of nitpicky, really. Who cares? The TCL 10 Pro. Yeah, there we go. Ooh, all right. I'm actually liking the way this looks so far. I know we didn't really get too far in, but come on now. Look at this. Presentation is key. All right, so let's pull this phone out. Okay, it's, I'm surprised it's so lightweight with all those features I mentioned and a 4,500 milliamp hour battery. It's very narrow and tall. Hold on, let's put that to the side. We're getting ahead of ourselves. We do have a SIM ejection tool, of course. Oh yes, I love it when they include these. We got an actual gel skin clear case to put on the phone to protect it. Nice touch. And there we go, we got the logo that I'm not really liking, although it does look all right. Display greatness. Hopefully that display is definitely greatness. I mean, it's HDR10, NXT Vision, Full HD+, super tall, come on now. It's gotta look good, right? We also have a quick start guide and safety and precautions. Doesn't look like we got any TCL stickers, unfortunately. Next time. Yo, I'm really liking this packaging. Look at this, we got little flaps. Including a USB-A to USB Type-C cable and a quick charge 3.0 wall adapter. I'm sure you all know how quick charge works. You can get a 50% charge in about 35 minutes. Not too bad. And now let's get onto the phone. Light it on. Oh, okay, this thing looks super nice. Look at that. I mean, it's just a blank screen, but it's super shiny, it looks good. I love, I love how tall this phone is. I know a lot of people don't like tall phones. I don't know why. For some reason, I do. 
Maybe it's just me? Oh wow, this gray is super nice. I thought it was gonna be a bit more shiny, but it's a bit more of a matte finish, although it does change colors and the way it looks and shimmers based on the way the light hits it. Wow, it just looks super nice though. Like it's not too flashy, so if you don't like something flashy, this is more on the stealthy side, looking good. Up here on the top of the back, we do have the array of four cameras looking super nice, along with the laser autofocus that'll focus super quickly even in the dark, and even two LED flashes that are actually, it might be a little hard to tell, but the LED flashes are actually raised up a bit above the cameras. Why is that? Maybe if you're running around naked and you put your phone down, the camera lenses won't get scratched. Smart, huh? We got some very minimal TCL branding on the back and the rest is just all blank, very minimalistic looking. And I'm really digging the way they arrange these cameras. It just makes it look super classy. No stovetop, you know what I'm saying? Over here on the left side, we do have one button. This is a user customizable smart key, which you can actually set to launch any app you want or any feature you want, just with the click of a button. Very convenient. Samsung took a while before they did that. Over here on the right side, we have a volume rocker along with the power button, simple. Down on the bottom, we have the SIM card tray, the USB Type-C charging port, as well as a speaker grill and microphone. Up on top, will you look at that? We actually have two things that a lot of phones don't have anymore. And remember, this one's like half the price of the flagships. A 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and what is that? Will you believe it? It's an IR blaster so you can control TVs at will. I wish every phone had that, I love that feature. Along with another microphone, of course. And then taking a look on the front, we got this massive 6.47 inch screen. That's almost six and a half inches. That's insane. AMOLED and curved, looking good. We have a little teardrop notch for the 24 megapixel selfie camera. And now you're probably wondering, how do we unlock this? Do we have to use Face ID? I didn't see a fingerprint scanner anywhere. <laughs> well, this is a good day for both of us because, good news, we have an under-display fingerprint reader, and better news, this is the first time I've ever used one of those, and it's gonna be like magic, I can already tell. So before we get this booted up, let's try out the case real quick. Slips on real easily, gives you some nice grip to it, cameras are exposed, buttons are very clicky. Wow, this is actually a really good case. I'm impressed, normally I don't like silicone cases, but this one's alright. Oh, that's clever! Look what I just noticed! The part right here that I said, I was like, why do they have this big gap here? I know what they're trying to do. I didn't know they were trying to do this though. TCL logo is right in the middle of that. Smack dab, looking nice. Really though, I'm liking the case. It looks good. Wow, I might, I might actually use this case. I was planning to go naked, but not anymore. The case does provide some lip protection on the front as well as the camera, it's not a it's not a bump, but I mean, it still adds more rays off of the camera, even though the camera's flush anyways. So that's cool, yeah. Now let's power this thing on. Oh, here we go. Oh, that's screw. Wow, this is definitely AMOLED. It looks super nice. I always like watching the splash screens. I don't know about you. So let's watch this together, shall we? Nice. Nice animations. No sound, but it looks nice. And here we go. Hi there. Let's get started, shall we? Right here, you can actually get a better look at the teardrop notch. Not too bad, not too intrusive. We do have a little bit of a chin at the bottom, but it's definitely not too bad. This screen though, this screen is, I'm surprised. It's so clear, so crisp. Looks very nice. I, <laughs> I, I don't know, I'm just impressed. It's so clear and just look, wow. The blacks are deep, definitely AMOLED. What else can I say? Let's pop out the SIM card tray. Now, as far as I know, this doesn't have an actual IP rating, although they did put a rubber ring around here, so it's definitely water resistant to an extent. They've tried. I'm not going to say much more, but I'm not too scared. This is nice too. On the top, we have a SIM card slot. On the bottom, micro SD card slot. All in one, I like that. This phone is factory unlocked to work on all GSM carriers, no CDMA, and it does have a plethora of bands, so you should be fine no matter what. I'm going to get this thing set up and then we'll be right on back after a message from our sponsors. All right, and now it's time to do the part I've been looking forward to, unlock with a fingerprint. So we're gonna go next, we're gonna set this up, we gotta get a pin set up. Let me just do this secretly. That's cool, it lights up. So since it is lighting up, I'm guessing this is an optical fingerprint one, because that's to light up your finger to be able to read it. <laughs> this is like futuristic. I remember back in high school, there was this app where you could make it seem like you had an on-screen fingerprint reader, but it was really just dependent on how long you held the screen in that specific spot. Or maybe it wasn't even that spot, just held the screen anywhere, really. But it, it was fun. Now we actually have it, that's pretty amazing. Oh, we can unlock with our face too, so why not? Okay, that was really fast, look at that. Okay. We got all those colors and it's moving. That looks nice. Let's use that one. Oh, nice. Okay, we're in. Okay, that's very fluid already. I'm liking that. And it looks, I'm still impressed with this screen. It looks so nice, so clear. 
Wow. Keep in mind, all those waves you're seeing on the screen right now, that's not actually happening in real life. It's the camera shutter speed or something going on interfering with the screen. In person, it looks super amazing. Like, look at that. That's how amazing it looks. Crazy, right? Like that. Wow. I'm impressed. All right. We got the app drawer here. Loaded up with apps. No bloatware, it looks like. Nice. Obviously, it's unlocked. If you got it from a carrier, it'd probably be loaded up with stuff. Like, that's one of the reasons I like iPhones. They don't have bloatware. Perfect, right? I really wish Google wouldn't allow bloatware either. That'd be great. But at least if you get it unlocked, you're generally in the clear. Oh, look at that. Swipe to the left. You got Google News and everything right here. That's awesome. You don't have to open up a separate app. See, I'm used to being on an iPhone. You have to go in the Google app to see all this, but it's actually just right here on the left side of the home screen. That's great. You know, the first thing I want to look at are all these cameras. We got five cameras. Let's take a look at them and see how well they actually do. So 64 megapixels. I'm expecting greatness here. So we'll set up this box here. See if I can get a nice shot here. Alright, pretty fast shutter speed. It does look a little bit on the dark side though. So we have HDR set to auto, we have timer settings, flash settings, filters, 4x3, 16x9, 1x1. Okay, so photo size, obviously, oh, it's not even set to 64. We want 64 megapixels, high pixel, video quality, we can go up to 4K at 16x9 at 30 frames per second. Can you only do 30 frames per second? Even on 1080p, 720p? Wow, they're all, they're all set to 30 frames per second for some reason. Huh. We have electronic image stabilization, AI camera, calorie detection, that sounds awesome, AI composition, dark shot for when it's dark. So you can press the volume button to either do a shutter, zoom, or volume. We'll leave it on shutter, I like that. Triple cam, I want to say that's going to let us take three pictures at the same time, so you can see all different vantage points, which will be great. We have shutter sound, watermark, we'll leave that on just for the purpose of this video. I don't know why you would leave it on regularly though, it doesn't make sense. So now we're on high pixel mode, and you can actually turn it off here on the bottom. So let's take a 64 megapixel picture. I mean the picture does look on the dark side, although I guess the lights are coming this way, so it might be throwing it off a bit now that I think about it. Let me try it with the flash on and see if that changes up anything. You know what, I'm gonna try one, let's see, get, the, get it out of the way of the light. Now let's try this. You know what? Not bad. I mean, I'm not sure if it's 64 megapixel good, but it's it's all right. It's not bad. We also have the zoom option, so let's see. Let me try to show you guys what's going on here. So we have the phone box right here. We're on 1x zoom. We're on 2x zoom. We can zoom all the way up to 10x. Look at that. All the way in there. Not too bad, really. For 10x, let's go back out to 1. Right here we can go wide, it looks like. Yep, wide. I mean, I, don't, I wouldn't say it's super duper wide, but it's decently wide. You can definitely see more. Look at that. Then we go to macro. So, wait, no. This, oh, wait. Right. So here we go. This is the triple camera. This is actually using the 64 megapixel camera, the ultra wide, and the low light video all at the same time. So let's see what this actually looks like. Okay, I guess, okay, I'm kind of disappointed. <laughs> you can't actually take the picture of all of it at once. But what you do is you see which one you like. You're like, okay, for this picture, I need to be ultra wide. So you tap that and then it opens up the ultra wide and you can snap your picture, just like that. And the picture for the ultra wide, that doesn't look that good at all. I don't know, that picture just looks very blurry to me. I don't know why, it's kind of weird. Let me try a regular shot this time, ultra wide. Uh, the ultra wide looks really blurry, that's weird. Okay, we got portrait mode here. Will that work on a box or does it have to be a person? We're about to find out. All right, it actually did blur out the background. I mean, it doesn't look the best I've ever seen, but definitely not bad. We have super night mode. You know what? Hey, kill the studio lights. All right, as you guys can see, or maybe not, we are really dark right now. So we're in super night mode. Let me see what we can do here. Keep the device steady. There we go, we took a super night shot. You know what? That's actually pretty good. I mean, it's still pretty dark, but it's really dark in here. Well, look at that. We can actually see some detail. I'm pretty impressed with that. We got pro mode, so you can obviously manually adjust everything. Hey, studio on. Okay. And then now, we actually have more modes. We have slow-mo, which actually goes up to 960 frames per second for super slow-mo. We have stop motion, light trace, so you can actually draw stuff with light. That's awesome. We're not gonna be doing that right now. And then we have panoramic mode, of course, high pixel mode, and then super macro. So we're on the super macro mode now. And look at that, I can get super close to the box and it's actually still clear. So 
Let me see. Let me get some small words here on the back. Oh, look at that. That's actually super nice. And yes, the macro is actually super good. I'm liking that one. The wide angle wasn't too good. Super macro, it's definitely a win. And then of course, let's try the selfie mode. Flip the camera around, and now, not too bad. I know my iPhone definitely looks better. This is a higher megapixel count, but that doesn't really mean much. Okay, so we'll do a regular shot first. It looks okay, not, not the best ever. <laughs> oh wait, is beauty mode on? Oh, you can have beauty mode on too, so let's turn beauty mode all the way up. It looks about the same, just more airbrushed. <laughs> And then we have portrait mode too. Portrait mode, not too shabby. I'm actually digging that, okay. And let's actually, we need to try out some video. So first we're gonna do the front, the regular main camera for a video shot. Hey, right here, this is a sample of, I think it's at 4K, 30 frames per second still. Main camera, 64 megapixels. How does it look? Let's put the box next to me. Is, am I overexposed or something? I got all these studio lights on me, so hopefully it's able to correct it and bring down the brightness a bit. Hopefully the audio sounds good too, because that's a big problem I have with some cameras. If the audio doesn't sound good, then what's the point? Hopefully it looks good though. And then now let's do a front-facing video. All right, front-facing 24 megapixel camera. Do you know the video actually doesn't look too bad? I feel like the video looks better than the pictures actually did. Hmm. Can we focus? We don't have focus, of course. But uh, it looks clear to me. This is, should be at 1080p. I didn't actually go in the settings for the selfie camera, though. I don't know if there are settings. But there probably are. I guess it would be separate, maybe. I wish they would all be together, but whatever. Hopefully the audio sounds good, too, but the video... I think it looks pretty good. What do y'all think? All in all though, I think the cameras are definitely acceptable. They're not the best ever, but for 450 bucks, I think they're good enough. Plus you get four of them. The wide angle though, I'm really disappointed in that one. All right, so now that we've taken care of the cameras, let's take a look at what else we got. Over here, we do have a little sidebar. You can actually add different apps here. They stole this from Samsung, but who cares? I don't. We can add apps here. So we can have Google Chrome, a compass, whatever you want that we have easy access to us. So no matter where you are, where can we be? We can be in Netflix. All right, Netflix looks good. It's actually pre-installed, nice. We got an update, let's update it, why not? But while you're doing all this, boom, swipe over here. We wanna go to Chrome, bam, just like that. Loving that feature, a little convenient access, right? We do have the smart button on the left side, of course. You can press that and now we can set it up. A single press, we can set up to do whatever we want. A double press and a long press. Let's see, so one press, took an instant picture. Double press, just opens up the camera, and then holding it down, what time is it? It's 7.30 p.m. Look at that, pretty awesome, right? You know what, I completely forgot. Let's try out the fingerprint sensor. Oh, it's down there. Okay, that opened up right away once I figured out where it was. Wow, okay, it's not super fast though, but maybe I'm missing the mark. It's actually pretty quick, it takes about a second. Yeah, it's a little bit on the slower side. Well, I still love that. Now let's try face unlock. I'm not looking. Bam! Face unlock is definitely fast. Okay, perfect. Now as far as settings go, what settings do we have in here? We have network and internet, of course. We can change the Wi-Fi, cellular network, data usage, hotspot, VPN, all the good stuff. Same old, same old. Bluetooth and device settings. We do have NFC, so you can obviously transfer files between each other and as well as use Google Pay. We have dark mode on automatically, but you can also toggle it on all the time. I like dark mode. Let's just leave it on for now. An always on display. Okay, that was off, but now we have it on. I want to see what that looks like. Oh, wait, hold up. Always on, so it should be on right now, right? Oh, there we go. We can see the time, the date, the battery percentage. Obviously, some notifications will probably pop up, and then we can also see the fingerprint down here. Just put our finger on it. Bam, good to go. Nice. And a notification light, which I haven't had since I've had an iPhone. So that's something I've missed. We have NXT Vision, so we already have that turned on. We can have screen color set to vivid, gentle, or standard. Adaptive tone. That's just like on iPhones where it adjusts the screen based on the environment you're in, so it's not too harsh on the eyes. I love that, so we're leaving that on for sure. We have system navigation. We can have buttons, gestures, or more. What's more? So I think this one's more like an iPhone, right? Okay, so yeah, it's swiped up. Okay, hold up. Okay, so this one's basically an iPhone. Although it's nowhere near as smooth, so I don't think I'll keep it on. I mean, it is pretty smooth, but it has a bit of a delay. It's not as fluid. Stick with the buttons. On Android, I have to use buttons. It's just the better way to do it. Nice, we have an app cloner, so you can actually clone apps like Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, whatever, so you can have more accounts on one phone, so you don't have to keep switching and logging out. That's a great feature. I would love to have that on an iPhone for sure. We have a screen recorder, which is always nice to have. 1080p resolution. 
we can record the microphone sound or mute. There's no option to record the system sounds, which is a bummer because that's one of the features I love about the iPhone. It records whatever you hear coming out of the iPhone and you can also turn on the mic if you want to, but this one you can only record the mic, so that's a bummer. We have gestures, so you can flip to mute, three finger screenshot, let me try that. No, that's cool. Okay, we'll leave that on. It can even do scrolling screenshots. I wish the iPhone had that where it didn't save it as a PDF. I would love it to save as a regular JPEG. Split screen gestures, quick launch camera, tap to wake. Yeah, we want tap to wake on. I love that feature. We have game mode, so you can choose the block notifications, have a constant brightness, double check for gestures, yada, yada, yada. Turbo mode to have the best performance, but also use more power. You probably want that on unless you're trying to conserve power as well as optimize the network to limit <laughs> other apps network usage while you're gaming so that way you don't start lagging and they can also clear out background apps to release storage for the game as well as driving mode which you know driving mode is driving mode and then smart key which we already took a look at nice we have security we have Google Play Protect, Find on Device, Security Update. The security patch is from March 1st, so it is about three months old, not too bad. Google Play Update is from December of last year. We have screen lock options, fingerprint, face key, smart lock, you know, all the basic stuff. We have private space here, so you can actually keep all your stuff private if you wanna be a little sneaky. And even app lock, so you can lock individual apps so you need to unlock it with a passcode. That's great, I love that feature for sure. So now let's hit up YouTube real quick. We'll take a look at how videos work as well as how the speakers sound. Eats was inspired by the Popeye's chicken sandwich, and it was beautiful. Oh, baby, you got some spell on that. It's all fluffy, boy. Love that chicken sandwich from Popeye's. Get the sandwich for just $3.99. Take it home or get it delivered. Love that chicken from Popeye's. Okay, the video looks extremely clear. You can stretch it. The notch doesn't get in the way too much. The sound is really loud, although it's only coming from the bottom speaker. There's no stereo speakers here, which is a downer. But the video itself looks super clear, super vibrant. I loved it. So all in all, this phone is actually super nice and impressive. The screen is amazing. Video quality is amazing. The colors are so vibrant. In-screen fingerprint scanner. Bam. I love it. Look at that. That's awesome. I don't know. This is the first time I've ever had one, so I'm pretty impressed. Although it is on the slower side, but doesn't matter. Not too much. Come on now. Plus you got face unlock, which is super fast. I haven't experienced any lags in here. Everything is super smooth. The screen is super nice. It's definitely a pleasure to use. The only thing I found out so far is the cameras aren't super great. They are passable, but they're not amazing by any stretch of the imagination, especially that super wide angle lens, which maybe once I go outside and try it out with some nature or something that's actually like further away, maybe because everything was too close and the lights were kind of interfering, maybe then it'll look better, but for now, I'm not too impressed with the cameras, although they are definitely good enough to get the job done. But I'm gonna be using this, putting it through the paces, and seeing how well I like it in my everyday life, and I'll get back to you guys and let you know if I like it. Let me know if you guys tried it out for yourself or if you're planning to pick one of these up and what you guys thought of it so far. Of course, I'll leave the link down below in the description if you wanna pick one of these up for yourself, because really, for 450 bucks, this screen and everything's amazing. This might actually be the new OnePlus flagship killer. TCL coming in strong with what I believe is their first series of smartphones, so I'm pretty impressed. Okay.